Okay, we're gonna answer the question about cream soups and specifically how to make cream of broccoli soup. Uh, this certainly would be one of America's favorite soups, the cream of broccoli, and um, we're gonna put a little twist or two on this, but I'm gonna give you a formula and a process, some techniques and principles about making cream of broccoli soup that you can apply to just about all the cream soups that you make if you want to, okay? Obviously, there's multiple ways of making cream soup. Um, I think the overall, we have to say that people would assume that a cream soup is a soup that's creamy and has been slightly thickened. That's how one would identify one, I suppose. Um, but in the um, big picture, there's a few principles and techniques that are very specific that can guide and help you through the process of making any cream soup. And you're gonna learn those on this video today. Um, we also have two other cream soups, and you will notice that the techniques and uh, process that I take uh, the cream of broccoli soup, soup through will more or less be duplicated with different little twists and turns on the cream of potato soup and the cream of tomato soup that are both part of this text, okay? So we're gonna start you out with the cream of broccoli and we're gonna begin by um, putting a little bit of whole unsalted butter into a soup pan, okay? And we have a little gallon and a half pan here. And we're going to put a little bit of butter in there. And I want you to pay special attention to how I cut the broccoli up because the part of the broccoli that you're going to use for the soup is just the center part of this root. The bottom part of this root, which is slightly woody, is always discarded. It has no function in cooking or eating to speak of. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off the bottoms that we don't want off of all the broccoli that we have. And we're going to get, get that out of here. Yeah. Okay, now real quick, we're going to get the onion and the celery started. And I think my particular recipe calls for three, three ribs of celery and one large to medium sized onion. Slice the onion. Put it in there with the butter. Cut up the celery. Remember, it doesn't matter how much or way that you slice, as long as it's small enough to cook in a short period of time, because basically this is going to be pureed with our portable blender stick, which of course you can use a food processor or a regular blender for that function also. Okay, let's get the celery in there. And now we're going to cut the florets off of all these broccoli because we're going to use these and incorporate them into the soup in later stages which is going to help keep the soup green and give it that broccoli look but we're going to use the stems the middle of the roots i should say as the primary pureed broccoli flavor and then we're going to puree some of the florets into it later so let's get this sliced up these stems as we're going along here and get them in the pot here just cut them in half first before I slice them to expedite the process of how long it takes for this soup to cook. The bigger the pieces, the longer it takes for them to be pureable. Now my recipe called for a pound and a half of broccoli, so I have a little bit more than that here. So we're going to stop I'm going to leave this broccoli alone and we're going to use these here and that here and that's all. Cutting some more stems up here. Okay. I'm going to throw a little bit more butter in there for the amount of food that I have. So it doesn't again matter what the measurement is for how much butter. Uh, this stage of making a soup might require, whatever the recipe says is almost irrelevant once you understand the principle of what you're doing. 
In other words, if you don't have enough butter, you've got to add some more. And that the oil or the butter is the thing that's used to transmit the heat to the food from the flame itself. So you just need the amount that will, so that the food will have something to sit in. And that's how you need to approach how much butter should I put in my soup to cook it at this point or anything like that. Now we're going to season this just a pinch with the, um, bring the dried leaf thyme over, Lewis. I'm going to put a little bit of, little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. And we're going to put just a pinch of dried thyme in the soup here. I don't know if the pinch is the proper technical measurement, but you know what I mean. All right, now, um, all right, while that's cooking, remember now, this is a cream soup. So this soup, very much like a white sauce versus a brown sauce, when you make a white sauce or a white soup, if you will, which in the case of a cream soup, you don't brown the foods because it'll discolor the soup and it'll have a brown flavor instead of a quote, white flavor, if you will. So you want to be careful not to brown the stuff. You're just cooking it until it's tender enough to eat. And keep in mind that the cooked vegetable and broccoli gives off a slightly different flavor into the soup when it's pureed than an uncooked one does. Just take a raw mushroom and eat it, and take a cooked mushroom and eat it, and you'll see what I mean. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these florets and we're going to blanch them. I need that ice water over here. Um, we're going to blanch them in some boiling salt and water so they get nice and green. Here, just set it right up here on the towels there. There you go. And I need water inside here, too, a little bit. Um, okay. All we want to do is we want to put the broccoli and shock it into the boiling water. This is going to be used for part of the garnish. We're going to do that while the stuff is sauteing here, which, by the way... coming along good you don't need to cook it that much okay you want to if you cook it halfway you're okay now uh, yeah just pour the water right there now um, I'm gonna put a pinch of garlic in this soup and although I have it in the written PDF recipe and I'm doing it on the video here uh, it's not something you have to do this soup will turn out great without it but I, I like that I like to add a little bit to it but be careful because you don't want your soup to taste like garlic in this particular case, this is not, not a pronounced additive to the soup, okay? All right. I put maybe a big tablespoon in that whole thing. Now, according to me, we're making approximately two quarts of soup here, okay? Now, I have a uh, recipe calls for a quart and a quarter, give or take, of chicken stock. So we're going to throw some stock in here. And... Recipe calls for a little bit of potato, which is one of the things that one can use to thicken a soup. You add pre-boiled and peeled potatoes sliced up to whatever the liquid is that you're going to be thickening and pureeing, all right? So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one potato to start with. Because remember, I can always add more thickening agents. I don't want to make it too thick. And then what? Then I have to add more stock and dilute the flavor of the soup to adjust the texture. So cautiously, as always, when thickening your stock and sauce, the first stages of that process, you're always very cognizant of the fact that be careful you don't over thicken it. So I'm going to add just the one potato to it. It's a little bit like cooking a steak. Once it's well done, you can't make it medium. So we have a tendency to cook our steaks a little bit more to the rare side so that we're, we can always cook it some more if we need to. All right, there's the potato in there. Now, uh, we're going to let that come to a simmer and cook. And um, 